So after being vegan for five years, I decided to eat eggs. And this is not a clickbait video whatsoever. As you can see, they are eggs for sure, right there. So we've got the eggs there, and then the pad thai with the egg in this. It's a seed to feed restaurant. And I'm looking at the egg, as you saw then. It does not look appealing to me at all. I'm not feeling any desire to eat it. I smell it as well. It doesn't smell good to me. And I'm trying to mash it up because I never even liked the yolk of eggs when I didn't use to be vegan whatsoever. And the reason why I decided to eat eggs was for weeks my brain just kept obsessing over eggs time and time and time again and then it would pass then it would go pass and I got to a point yesterday where I was like right I'm just gonna do it so I went to this place they have organic free range eggs that actually look after the chickens themselves so I was trying to get it from the most ethical source possible and trying to get the highest quality eggs possible as well because factory farm eggs are the most unethical possible and the most unhealthy possible so first off I tried the pad thai with the egg in you can't really see the egg that much. It's just little pieces of egg. And I thought that it would be really easy for me to eat egg. So I'm eating that now. I'm fully fitting in to what is going on for me and tasting it. And I can't actually really taste the egg whatsoever in this. So I go to have a second mouthful of this so I can really, really taste it and really experience what's going on. And I'm someone, as you can see my face there right now, I'm starting to get really freaked out and weirded out. I'm someone that has an ability known as being an empath. This is one reason why I'm vegan. And this is starting to put a real intense stress response in my body. I feel my adrenaline going up, cortisol. I start feeling really intense fear and anxiety. You can see it on my face. I'm not enjoying this. And I didn't expect this to happen. I can feel emotions of other people and animals and various other things as well. And it's fully getting me now to experience what it's like to be a chicken. So I feel that I'm a chicken, which is really freaky. And I'm experiencing the fear and anxiety the chicken had when the eggs was taken away from it. So I've heard vegans say that this is something that can happen to chickens when you take eggs away from them. But I didn't really believe them whatsoever. And then I had this experience and it just freaked me out. My emotional body is just going really crazy. I feel really, really upset. And then I just ate a bit of just the vegetable on its own and I'm going for a process. I'm speaking to my girlfriend at the time and I'm really shocked that this is happening because I didn't expect this to happen. I thought, oh, I'm just going to eat an egg and I'm either going to like it or not like it. I didn't know I was going to experience being a chicken and the trauma that was induced within it when I ate it. And this is one reason why I want to share this video with you. One, I want to be transparent. I'm not going to be one of these vegans that just start eating non-vegan things such as certain famous YouTubers out there that lied for ages. I wanna be completely transparent and honest with you and the reason why I did this. So yeah, I hope this video is gonna give you some deep insights into my experience and maybe make you more aware of why I am on a plant-based diet. And maybe it'll get you switched to a plant-based diet. So yeah, we cut the video there because I said to her, I need to turn the video off. I was just in such a strong emotional response. I was finding it very, very overwhelming what was going on for me. And I actually needed to just be having my girlfriend be completely present with me and just hear what was going on for me emotionally. And then what's happened after that is induced in me. I'm looking at that egg and saying, man, it's not appealing to me in any way, shape or form. Like I have been thinking about the egg a lot and it seemed very appealing to me when I think back. When it actually come to it, it was a lot more of a different experience. It's like people think about ending their life. There's a difference between think actually ending your life actually thinking about it actually doing it is way different so when I actually came doing it the eggs weirded me out and now what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get my head to go through a process where I'm like oh let's just eat the egg but what I'm doing now is just picking out all the vegetables making sure there's no egg on it getting it off and eating so slowly even my girlfriend said she's never seen me eat this slow and I said this is a rarity you will never see me eat this slow because I'm actually quite a fast eater and I'm just telling her everything that is going on and yeah, it's just a very, very, very surreal experience. And I'm someone that has a lot of X sensory abilities. If you don't know what X sensory abilities, you can search up online. But yeah, it got me to fully experience what a chicken is experiencing with all the trauma that's induced within them when you take eggs away from them. So it's like, this is what a lot of people are lacking. They have this emotional dissonance where they don't really connect to the animal fully and the things that it is providing them with for them to eat, whether it's their flesh or their eggs or their milk and so on. And I'm saying like, 
If people can actually connect with animals fully and feel into the pain that is being induced within them when these certain foods are being taken from them, well, being created from them for you to then eat and be put on your plate, yeah, most people are never pretty much experiencing the emotions connected to that animal. But if you can actually feel into the pain of the animal that has gone through the trauma to provide you their flesh or their byproducts, and you experience that, it's gonna make you think, no, I can't eat this whatsoever, and this is what it did to me right now. So I'm so glad that I had this experience that it affirmed to me why I eat a plant-based diet. Animals are friends, not food. And yes, there are so many people on a vegan diet that don't thrive and destroy their health, but a lot of them do extreme diets, such as a fruitarian diet, which is like mostly fruit or almost almost fruit, or they eat just all garbage packaged processed foods. Most vegans out there, well I say a high percentage of vegans, do not eat a whole food plant-based diet where they eat a variety of raw foods and cooked foods. And my girlfriend actually wanted to try it, and she hasn't been a vegan as long as me. She didn't experience what I experienced, but she said she doesn't like the taste of the egg anymore, and she was not appealing to her whatsoever. And I'm asking her if she is experiencing what I did, and she said no, but I don't necessarily have the ability to experience what you're experiencing. And yeah, that was really good that she had the experience as well, because now it's just made her be even more aware of why she's not eating eggs. It's not just for the animals and for the environment, but also because it just doesn't taste good whatsoever. So yeah, if you want to thrive on a vegan diet, you just need to eat the healthiest whole food plant-based vegan diet as much as you possibly can. You may need to do some supplementation because yes, the way food is grown, it's normally grown in monocultures. The soil is just messed around with so much. The soil is depleted and most food is harvested way too early. And you can actually watch a documentary called Dirt the Movie, which is one of the best documentaries on this issue with soil depletion and our food just being so low in nutrients. If you compare like the vitamin C content of oranges now compared to about 50 years ago, scientific research shows that the vitamin C content is about 10 times lower. So it's not the food's fault, it's due to the growers. At least the majority of the food produced out there is very nutrient-less especially when it's being grown in mass production ways. So yeah, sometimes you might need supplementation, but I would rather eat a plant-based diet and be on supplementation. And yeah, I just tried the egg there, and I'm saying it doesn't taste good to me at all. You can see on my face, I'm not liking it. I'm like, nope, this is not appealing to me whatsoever. It's actually really, really disgusting. The texture, I didn't dislike at all, but it just doesn't really taste of anything. And that's why... Most people will add loads of seasoning to their eggs or add it into cakes or add it into loads of other things because, yeah, eggs really are not that great. And this is actually quite a good high-quality egg because the yolk is actually quite colourful, like bright in colour. And that means that it's a way more high-quality egg for sure, which means it will be more nutrient-dense and more flavourful. So, yeah, I just keep on eating the food. But yeah, I'm just removing all of the egg and I'm like, well, the pad thai is actually pretty damn good, but that egg experience just made it really, really bad for me. So yeah, I'm just doing my best to eat as much as it as I possibly can. And as you can see, I'm just literally picking at it like a fussy eating child. But there's good reason, as I've already explained multiple times in this video. And yeah, man. It doesn't make sense to me. I know so many people that have been vegan for so long and then they go back to eating meat and dairy and eggs and other foods from animals. And quite a few times I've asked them about like, well, how do you deal with the emotional connection to animals and them being harmed? And when I ask them, none of them say anything to me. They don't reply whatsoever. It's like there's some people that would do things to justify saying that plants have feelings as well. But I don't experience all the, the trauma that the chicken had induced in it that produced the egg that I was eating. So to me, it's just a garbage load of oh, ridiculous justification that's being done with that. And as I said to my girlfriend here, if I had human flesh on a plate and then I had the flesh of an animal, I'm going to feel as bad for eating either one, because both of them have not wanted to die. They're both sentient beings that have emotions that want to live. 
So I would feel into the pain of both of them. It makes no difference to me whether it's flesh from a human or an animal. I see animals equal to human beings. They want to live as much as you want to live. And they do not want their life to be taken away whatsoever. And if you watch certain videos where the animals have their lives ended to produce meat that then can be sold in shops for you to eat, it is a very traumatic experience for them, just like it would be for you or any of your friends if someone went to end your life against your will. And it's so good that I had this experience because I kept thinking, oh, maybe eggs might make me feel even better than I feel... Maybe I actually need them. And rather than just keep avoiding it, avoiding it, which I've done with certain things before on my own journey, especially whenever I used to be on a raw food diet, I used to be like having cravings for potatoes and other cooked food. I was like, oh no, no, no. Then I started eating them and found I felt really good from them emotionally, physically, holistically. So I thought, okay, rather than deny myself the experience, my brain keeps thinking about eggs. Let's just go and experience it and see what is going to happen. And my head, I actually thought they were gonna make me feel really good and I'd be drawn to eating them again. But I did not have that experience <laughs> whatsoever. And by it being such a traumatic experience for me, it just makes me want to stick to a plant-based diet because it just makes sense to me. If I was someone that felt I couldn't thrive on a plant-based diet and I needed certain animal foods and I could eat them without experiencing the trauma that's been induced within them, then sure, I would eat them. But I'm not in that position whatsoever. I know how to thrive on a plant-based diet. I am thriving on a plant-based diet. So it doesn't make any sense to me why I would need to start incorporating animal foods into my diet. What, just start eating them because maybe I think I should be eating them and they don't start giving me any benefits. I don't actually need them. There's not certain nutrients in that I'm deficient in that I can't get on a plant-based diet whatsoever. It just doesn't make any sense. And then what, induce loads and loads of trauma into my body and get me to experience loads of fear and that. That doesn't make any sense to me. And I think that is what is happening to a lot of people in the world, especially people that eat factory farmed animals and their byproducts. They are just inducing so much fear and anxiety within their body that the animal has been experiencing. And as we know, how many people in the world live in fear on a regular basis? It is an epidemic. And there can be many reasons for this, but I believe this is one of the reasons why, because most people are eating three meals a day that contain something from an animal. And I believe that is the ultimate karma. It is going to make you live in a lot of fear and anxiety, especially if you're eating it from factory farm sources, as I mentioned, but I'll affirm that again. But one view I want to share is, say we're in our natural habitat and we're in a tribe and we don't have access to certain plant-based foods and all we can find is an animal that we need to end its life. I don't think people are getting a karmic debt for that brung into their life for actually ending the animal's life and eating it. If they're in a situation where that's all they've got and it's about their survival, then that's fine. But there is millions of animals, if not billions of animals, I don't know the exact numbers, being killed a year through factory farming. And it's like, it's completely ridiculous. It's destroying the environment. It's affecting most people's health in a, a negative way. And it's just ending loads of animals' life that want to survive, that are experiencing so much pain and suffering. It is just absolutely horrific. And it's just completely unnecessary. Most people are eating way more eggs and dairy and meat than they need if they're going to choose to be on a diet that has some meat-based and other animal-based foods. And if you look at the Blue Zones, which have the longest living civilizations in the world, most of them do eat some meat, but they eat it very, very rarely. And at least the animal has got to live a very full life in its natural environment, rather than it being brought up in a factory farm, enslaved and just abused and tortured and having their life just ended in a very horrific way after they've gone through all of that trauma. And if we just had everyone eating meat on a very, very rare basis, the amount of animals that would have their lives ended would be massively less than the amount that they're being killed. So yeah, most people are just eating excessive amounts of these things that come from animals. And yes, people don't necessarily need to eat them. They can thrive 
on a plant-based diet where your health is optimal in your mind and body, your hormone production is optimal, your digestion is optimal, your gut microbiome, and so on. But I know not everyone is going to want to eat a plant-based diet. And yeah, one thing I wanna elaborate on more, which I spoke about earlier, is I tried getting eggs from the most ethical source possible. But like I said, many vegans say, no matter how you source eggs, meat, and so on, it's not fully ethical whatsoever. There's a lot of shops in America that sell meat that they say they have ethically sourced or farmed meat. But at the end of the day, even if the animal is treated really, really well, you're still breeding it specifically in an unnatural environment where you are then taking its life when it doesn't want to have its life ended. And if you're someone that is sourcing this type of meat and you're eating a carnival diet, you're eating so much meat, man, that is really, really not good for the environment. It's very detrimental. You can do your research up on this subject online. I don't know lots on it off by heart. It's not something that I'm a specialist in whatsoever. And at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, you can eat meat and thrive from it. But when you're on a carnivore diet, it's like it's completely unnecessary. It's a very unbalanced diet, just like the fruitarian diet. Like I said, people in the blue zones eat meat on a very rare basis and they don't eat lots of it. So they're not just ending loads and loads and loads of animals' lives. The amount of animals that would be eaten within one's lifetime, if you're a person that lived in the blue zone, it would be hardly any animals whatsoever. But if you're someone that's eating a standard American diet or a carnivore, carnivore diet, man, you are just having so many animals' lives ended when it's not completely necessary whatsoever, as it's been shown in the blue zones time and time and time again. It's just like people are eating excessive amounts of meat when you can just eat a lot of other foods that are not harming any animals in the process as well, which for me, that just makes complete sense. Maybe it doesn't to you, whatsoever. I know not everyone's going to resonate with this whatsoever. But yeah, for me, I stick to a plant-based diet with no animal food in whatsoever, except for this experimentation, because it's just not in line with me. Ethically, morally, I want to have the least impact as I can on the environment. I want to have optimal health, which a plant-based diet at least helps me to have an optimal state of health holistically. And I don't want to be harming animals in the process. And anyone says, oh my God, that the grains and the soy and the corn, the farming of that kills so many different animals in the process of them being harvested. So that's their justification of like, you're doing that so we can eat meat. It's no difference. Oh, come on. It's ridiculous. Like, yeah, that may happen by accident but it's not being done intentionally where an animal is being brought up in an environment specifically for you to just eat their flesh and their byproducts whatsoever where they're completely enslaved it's completely different and that justification is just completely ridiculous because when you think about it, in certain places in america so many deers especially the peak season of deers where they are mating so many of them get killed by cars from them running into the road. How can you compare that the same to factory farm meat? You just cannot whatsoever. It just doesn't make any logical sense to me whatsoever. <sighs> yeah, yeah, but that's just the way it is. There's a lot of people that want to justify why they're eating products that are food-based products for people to eat that come from animals. So that's it for this video. Got any questions? Or if you have any experience with being vegan and trying certain non-vegan foods and you had a bad experience with it like me, let me know down below what your experience is. And if you like the video, like it down below. Don't forget to share this with others and don't forget to subscribe to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis where I'm sharing things about my life, how to get the body you want, weight loss, intermittent fast, Thing, and also showing you what I eat in a day, what I do in a day, and sharing many things about me and what I'm getting up to and many other things as well. So if it sounds good to you, make sure you click the subscribe button down below and you click the bell notification button, next subscribe button, otherwise YouTube will not notify you of when new videos are uploaded. So yeah, go vegan and catch you on the flip side. Peace.